Hi everyone, welcome back to Take Action Tuesday, your weekly video giving you tips and tricks to implement with AAC today. I am Lauren, a certified speech therapist and AAC enthusiast, and I am just on a mission to share what I know about AAC so that you guys can feel more confident and empowered to implement AAC and assess AAC yourself. So today we are gonna be talking about that assessment piece. So let's dive in. Okay, so we are going to talk about assessment today, and this is something I get questions about all the time, and we can't possibly put all the information into one, <laughs> one lesson for you, but what I want to do is I want to kind of walk through what my process looks like when I do an AAC eval, kind of a step-by-step, <clears throat> -step, how long I trial, how much I trial, that kind of stuff. I'm going to preface this with the fact that each individual clinician is likely going to evaluate slightly differently. You're also probably in an area that has some type of guidelines on how to implement. All right, everybody, let's dive into assessment today. So what I want to do is I kind of want to walk you step by step through my process of assessment, how long it goes, what it typically looks like. And I'm going to preface this with the fact that it doesn't always look the same. It differs if I'm in a school system versus in my private practice and if the person's just coming for an AAC eval or if they're a standing client. So there is going to be some variability in what your AAC assessment process looks like. And I do encourage you if you are in a system, a school system, um, you're in a private practice, I want you to reach out to those that are in that system and see if there's a specific way that the evaluation is run in that area. Um, I've been in school systems that have very like systematic, this is how we do an AAC evaluation. I've been other places where they said, do what works for you and go ahead and let us know. It also is going to differentiate, like differ based on how you're pursuing funding. Um, insurance has more requirements when it comes to the actual like funding process and trial process versus a private pay device where maybe the parents are just paying for the device. That doesn't necessarily require the same amount of time for a trial. Period. So I'm going to kind of just give you a general overview, but know that some of those factors may apply in your situation. So the first thing we want to do is we want to assess a couple different systems. So when it comes to the insurance world, insurance requests that you consider three devices. I want to emphasize the word consider. It doesn't actually say that you have to trial all three. I do personally highly recommend you put three language systems in front of that individual because we know that language systems are designed differently and some work better for other kids. So we really want to get to the bottom of what language organization is going to be best for that individual. So. I always start with some type of trial period. Sometimes my three device trials happen all in one day. Sometimes they happen all in one session. Sometimes I do one, one week, the next, the next week, and the next, the next week. So you're gonna wanna look at those three different devices and you're gonna wanna kind of piece out which one is best, which one fits the most with that individual. And then typically I pick that and I trial that for another couple of weeks. In the insurance world, a typical insur like a typical trial period is 30 days. I have seen 60 days on some. It varies. Some don't even have a trial period. So I think 30 days is a great place to start. So what I do is I go ahead and I look at those three systems. I pick one and I start using that system. We try to get a trial device out or we use it in therapy. We do what we can to get that system in more places than just my therapy room. 
we kind of look at how things are going. We start to educate the team. Then at about that halfway mark, that two week ish mark, we kind of check in and say, okay, how's this going? Is it going well? Are we seeing challenges? Are there features that are missing that we want to explore further? At that point, we either decide to keep moving forward with that specific language system, or we decide to switch to a different one that has different features and trial that for an extended period of time. So at that halfway part, we're kind of deciding, like this is probably what we're gonna do, or let's switch it up because this wasn't working the way that we need it. Then come the end of that month, that end of four weeks, we usually have a system that we've decided we're going to pursue funding with. So if you remember my episode from last week, that was all about that motivation to not extend those evals for a really, really long period of time, but to gather your information and make an educated decision. I feel pretty confident that that one month period of time is enough time to gather the information that you need. I will note there are times when that one month period isn't. Maybe you have a kid that needs alternate access and it just wasn't enough time to teach how to use that alternate access and you weren't able to kind of gauge exactly whether or not that was the best fit for them. Absolutely extend your trials then. Or maybe they were sick a week. Well, you kind of lost a week there, so maybe you want to extend it a little bit further. Or maybe after that two-week time, you needed to switch gears, but then whatever you switch to, you're still not 100% confident that's the right thing. So maybe you need to switch to another one and see if that's the best fit. My goal, though, with most of my clients is that within that two-month period to really have something solid and foundational. And if we're not able to get that high tech system set in place within that two months. And by set in place, I mean like you're pursuing funding, you made a decision, et cetera. You make sure that you have some other type of support in there. Um, Two months is a long time to go without communication supports. And then insurance funding on top of that ends up being months most of the time. So we really wanna make sure that we have something rolling to support our kids while we're pursuing this high tech system. So I know that was a lot of information jam packed. Thank you so much for joining me this week and I will see you next week on Take Action Tuesday.